Uh, so, um, hi, uh, my name is Sahai Xie, and uh, I am an undergraduate student in RPI majoring in electrical engineering. In this uh, program, I'm working on hands on tutorials of the signal processing for PM bit applications. Um, the signal processing methods produce many valuable and useful results. Most of them are presented in papers and documents. The purpose is to convey knowledge stored in this. Um, docu in this documents to new engineers. But the tools we use in this program are Python and Jupyter Notebook. So we, we use Python because it's the, like, the programming language that most people learn first. And if new engineers have not learned programming yet, it will be easier for them to get started. It has other, other advantages such as the coding format is much more readable and clearer than other programming languages. And it is also able to support many different libraries, such as Monkey, Pandas, Maplolib, which is quite um, crucial to graph join and data analysis. Uh, but why do we choose Jupyter Notebook? Because it possesses several benefits than other IDEs. First of all, uh, it is more suitable for data analyzing. The whole process can be recorded in a comprehensible way. Second, it is interactively convenient and user-face friendly than other IDs. There are usually a huge amounts of data stored in a file. Data analyzing is a complicated process, which usually contains long lines of code. Um, therefore, it is more clear to split codes into distinctive parts and test each part of the code. But in some IDs, such as Spider and Win, codes can only run as a whole, and this is uh, really inconvenient and time-consuming. Jupyter Notebook can solve these problems more easily. You can write a line of code and run the result, completing the work step by step. So, for example, the upper graph is a uh, win ID. You can see that uh, all print results come out together and the codes cannot be divided into separate blocks. Whereas in the lower graph, Jupyter Notebook divides the coding area into blocks, where the result of each block will be displayed separately and the uh, result of one block will not affect another block. Moreover, uh, different blocks share the same space, which means that the variable in different blocks are interconnected. In the second uh, so like in the second plot of win ID, if we change the value of A to 2, the result of A plus B will also change. But in Jupyter Notebook, change of value will not affect results in other block unless you run the other cell. Additionally, the sequence of the running code will be recorded, which is um, easier and helpful to debug. It has other advantages such as flexibility. It can be open on web page at any time, and uh, shutting down the file directly does not prevent it from processing the background. It is easy to share at the same time. The notebook can be shared in the form of web page, and uh, the notebook display is naturally supported in GitHub. And it can be it can be downloaded as different uh, format files such as HTML, PDF, and Python. Uh, let's, let's now talk about the spectral analysis, which is the most crucial part for signal processing. In signals, spectral analysis is the process of evaluating signal frequency in this free time domain, which involves the spectral estimation analysis of power spectral density. It considers the problem of determining the spectral content of a time series from a finite set of measurements, such as the distribution of power over frequency. And there are two ways uh, to spectral estimation, the non-parametric method and the parametric method. Comparing these two methods, the difference is that the parametric method postulates that the signal satisfies a generating model with no functional form. Since the model is close to reality, the estimation will be more accurate, but the wrong hypothetical model will generate bias the signal trend, producing fake frequency peaks. And non-parametric method is also very useful when dealing with signals with little information provided. And I will um, start with the non-parametric method. The spectral estimators of non-parametric method include the basis periodogram and the corollogram. 
periodogram is usually calculated by fast Fourier transform or FFT. Equations shown here are the basic algorithm for the computation of periodogram. There is a periodogram function in MATLAB which takes the input signal x and returns the periodogram power spectral density estimate PXX. If x is a vector, it will only produce one power spectral density estimate. And if x is a matrix, it will produce PSD estimate for each column. There is also a periodogram function in Python library, which returns the same output as MATLAB's. So in one aspect, using of these estimators for long data lines is able to produce high resolution signal, and it can manifest hidden periodicity in time series. But they also have the effects of the long-standing high variance, and this variance will not decrease with increased samples. So uh, improvement is needed to decrease the variance, and uh, this method is the Welch method. Welsh method used overlapping windows to reduce the noise, and the several aspects have been improved. First, it divides the original signal into pieces of segments. This is because we want to reduce the large fluctuations of periodogram. Second, we will overlap these segments and apply taper function to each of them. The last step is to uh, do periodogram to each section and average all the segments. Um, so the first is to divide signals into segments and uh, taper each of them. Tapering is the method that allows signals out of the specified specify, specify range to be zero. Um, this is um, crucial before applying the uh, applying the uh, Fourier transform because Fourier transform will consume a lot of energy on edges of the signal, and the uh, tapering is able to minimize edge effects that contaminate the power spectrum. But it will also create a problem when tapering because we will lose some data on boundaries. Um, but uh, this is uh, what we do, we do not hope it to happen. Therefore, uh, we allow these segments to, to be overlapped. The purpose is to regain some of the losing data. And uh, usually we will apply 50% uh, of overlap to each segment. And the last uh, step is to do periodogram to each segment and average these periodograms. By doing so, the curve of PSD will look smoother, and the variance of the estimated PSD will be reduced. But it also has deficiency, which the resolution of power spectral density will decrease in exchange for decreasing variance and the noise. So here is a comparison between the two PSDs estimated by periodogram and the Welch method. Uh, as you can see, the Welch method, uh, the Welch PSD is much more smoother, and the variance is much smaller than the PSD generated by the periodogram. But uh, the periodogram can produce a relative high resolution signal. And the other Another method is the parametric method. Parametric method is able to um, produce high resolution signal than the non-parametric when signal length is short. The most commonly used model is called the OPPO model, which the output of this filter is an autoregressive process. Um, therefore, it is also known as the AR model. Um, AR model is an expression for a type of random process which it uses linear combinations of past variable values to predict the target variable. And the UL worker equation is a method to estimate AR parameter of the AR model. Changes in parameter will alter time series patterns, which also demonstrate that different AR parameters will generate distinctive PSD estimates. And this method can provide some benefits uh, to us, such as the minimizing the forward prediction error in the least square sense and always producing a stable model with less variance. Um, the graph on the left shows the AR model as a linear system. And the PSD estimation function by neural worker method in the MATLAB is shown at the bottom of the page, where X is the input signal, order is the order of the autoregressive model used to produce the PSD estimate, and the PXX is the PSD estimate. 
Mm. I also make a comparison between the PSD of a signal using rush method and the real worker method. So the real worker method is smoother and the variance of the PSD is a little bit smaller than the rush method. And next I will talk about the main functions that apply in signal processing. And there are five of them. Um, there are the pre-processing function, uh, comp PSD function, frequency response function, a waterfall plot and spectrogram, and the low meter. So the first is to is the pre-processing function. Pre-processing is quite important because it can transform the data into form that is more suitable for analyzing. Furthermore, the raw data may contain outliers and missing values in which this poor quality of data may lead to incorrect results. Um, these problems may be caused by human errors when collecting the data and device limitations which they need to be fixed in the pre-process. And the methods applied in the pre-process are interpolation, the trend, and the filtering. Um, interpolation is applied when dealing with missing values. Linear interpolation is commonly used to fill the missing value with the mean value from the point before it and the point after it. The upper equation shows the interpolation function in MATLAB, where the input arguments are x, v, x, q, and method. x is the vector containing the sample points. v is the corresponding vector containing values of sample points. And x, q is the query point, and the method is the interpolation method. VQ is the vector returned by the function that contains the corresponding value of XQ. There is also an equivalent interpolation function in Python that uses library SciPy. But the difference is that the SciPy interpolation returns a function. We need to substitute the uh, query points into that function to get our desired value. And I will use MATLAB to make a simple illustration. So um, I create a x coordinates um, vector x and its um, corresponding y coordinates vector v. By plotting the v versus x, we can get the original curve shown below. And I set the uh, 16 um, query points from 0 to pi. Therefore, the function will produce uh, totally 32 values corresponding to the 32 uh, query points. And um, this is the picture by plotting the XQ and its corresponding VQ1. We can see that the curve shows a clear pattern by applying the linear interpolation. So linear interpolation may be the best way to fill the missing value because it's uh, simple and fast. And after we uh, after filming the missing data, the next step is to detrain the data. The trend is to remove the hidden trend in the data, and by doing so, it allows the subtrend in the data to be more easily identified. These two functions here both remove the linear trend from the input data and return the detrended data. Therefore, we are able to pay attention to the fluctuations of data. Um, it also implies that the mean of the detrended data becomes zero, and then we can observe the overall increase and decrease. <laughs> I will use MATLAB to make a simple il illustration. So uh, first I create the data and plot the curve. The picture below displays the original curve. We can see from the calculation that the mean of data is about 43. And then we substitute the data into the trend function and uh, get the trended data. The detrended data is shown by the magenta curve, which we can see the mean of the detrended data is approximately zero. By making the mean of detrended data, uh, by making the mean of detrended data to be zero, fluctuations of data will be more more obvious. And the last step to pre-process the data is to filter the signal. In this case, we are going to use the high pass filter because we want to eliminate some low frequency noise and give prominence to the fluctuations of high frequency signals. We first calculate the uh, filter coefficient through the high pass FIR filter. 
since it's uh, stability, then the signal can be filtered through zero phase digital filtering by substituting the data and the coefficient vector into the function. The, data, uh, the zero phase data digital filtering is preferred because it can reduce signal noise and uh, produce zero phase distortion. And these are the steps to perform uh, data processing. And here is the pre processing function applied in Jupyter Notebook. Um, so, the, for the first part of the function, we need to fix uh, samples with identical timestamp. Timestamp can associate time label with data, and it can eliminate that time and provide flexibility. The second step is to interplay the frequency matrix by using linear interpolation. And uh, after the interpolation, the trend, the trend data is required and the filter frequency matrix is performed after detrending. The function returns the filter frequency matrix and time matrix. And the next function used is the COMPSD, which the purpose is to derive the real worker and the uh, PSD estimation along with its corresponding uh, frequency. We use, two uh, we use two functions in Cheetah library. Um, they are the PSD Welch's function and the PSD AR function. The Welch function takes the data and the sampling, uh, sampling frequency as input arguments and return the frequency and PSD estimates. And uh, the PSD AR function estimates PSD using AR model and the real worker method. It returns the same output as PSD Welch uh, function. And this is the COMPSD function, which is a, which a class is created in the first part of coding in order to uh, prepare to store the PSD and the frequency in it. And then in the second part, we, uh, I use the PSD Welch's and the PSD AR function to derive the PSD and the frequency. In the last part of the code, a matrix is created to store the PSD and the frequency values in sequence. The PSD will return real worker class and the Welch class, which contain the PSD matrix and the frequency matrix. Um, then, the third, then the third function is the frequency response, which the purpose is to check if there is any distortion in the magnitude caused by noise. Noise is ubiquitous in all circumstances, which may cause transmission errors and may even in, in interfere with communication process. Therefore, the removal of noise distortion is significant in signal processing. The, um, Two functions we use are real worker function and uh, the frequency response function. We use the variance of wide waste and the reflection coefficient from the real worker equation and the substitute these values into the frequency response function. Then we can get the angular frequency and the, the frequency response. After we get these two vectors, uh, we can perform the phase and the magnitude plot as shown by this graph. And we can see that there is no magnitude distortion in this plot, uh, which is the ideal situation. Um, so the first, the fourth function we need to plot is the waterfall plot and the spectrogram. The waterfall plot is a three-dimensional plot in which the multiple data curves are manifested simultaneously. And it is often used to capture the time frequency relationship of a signal. Function to use to draw the graph is the plot surface in matplotlib. And XYZ represents the vectors on each axis. And here is the sample code that generates the wonderful plot. The first is to extract data um, of real worker PSD estimate and the, the frequency matrix. The second step is to create time matrix of equal shape as a uh, real worker PSD matrix. 
And then we are able to generate the order for plot by using a plot surface function. As you can see from the graph, uh, the x axis shows time, uh, y axis um, shows frequency, and the z axis shows power density. This creates a mountain like shape uh, figure, which this shape demonstrates that the power density of corresponding frequency at each time, telling us the change of signal power density at consecu consecutive intervals of time. And the visual information displayed by this 3D plot can be significant to research. And we also need to plot the spectrogram, which is the 2D representation of waterfall plot. Um, the function we use is also in matplotlib, which is called the contour. It takes uh, the same input arguments as plot surface, and the frequency on the vertical axis and the time on the x-axis. Um, so the color intensity of the spectrogram shows the amplitude of power density. And the color bar illustrates the numerical interval corresponding um, to various spectral density color. And the last function that is important to uh, plot it is the low miller, because the, uh, there are too many codes, there are too many lines of code. I did not take a screenshot of the code. I only screenshot, I only screenshot the graphical result which it displays the uh, plots of damping and the uh, frequency uh, versus time. The modular can provide uh, crucial information to the operational re reliability of interconnected grids. Since system damping can lead to power system oscillation, the mode frequencies and damping are always desired, and they are remarkably useful indicators of power system stress. And finally, I will display some code or cases that apply equations uh, mentions above. So first, um, I'm going. So first, the step. Uh, I'm going to convert the math file into txt file. Uh, and then while I sort out this data, the first step is to extract the uh, time value first and converting these time values into readable format and I store them in a matrix. And then I uh, extract the frequency values where they are stored in different columns in the files. And I will unify the mat mat matrix shape. Um, after extracting the data and the frequency data, time and frequency data, we can pre-process them and plot the results. The figure here are the original data and uh, pre-process the data over time. And then we can apply the CompSD function to the pre-processed data to obtain the PSD and the frequency vector by real worker method and the Welsh method. After plot the curve, we can notice that the curve generated by real worker method is smoother and the variance is much smaller than that of Welsh method. But uh, Welsh method is able to produce a high resolution PSD estimate than the real worker method. And the last function applied is the frequency function, which shows the frequency response of the real worker method. For this case, we can see that there is no magnitude distortion, which is, uh, which is desired. Um, so um, this is my presentation for the signal processing method, and thanks for watching. All right, thank you very much, uh, Sihan. <laughs>